uh, Father Max's advance on DuPont. It was mid 1985. Yes. It's a long time ago. And there's a lot of people watching right now that remember Father Max. So say, say hello to them. Uh, come and see me again in Assisi. I'm still living in Assisi. We have a beautiful center. You like it? You come and see our center. All right, everybody. Oh, you're welcome. To take class. Okay. I stand before you as uh, not only a director for the Institute for Individual and World Peace, but also as a minister of God's love and light and sound. And uh, I'm very moved. Uh, I've been to uh, all the opening ceremonies of the Olympics since 1984, and uh, that's an occasion where the world comes together in, in a wonderful celebration and, you know and if we have to go against each other I think the games are probably the best way to do that yes, yes. and uh, I want to tell you a story of, of, of our, our Institute we are also a foundation for the study of individual world peace and, and we've gone to various places around the world and in 1988 we were at with a group of 90 people at the Berlin Wall and the founder John Roger told us of a vision that he had. And he, he, he said he had a vision of a, a worm in the wall. Uh, and it was a worm of light. It was a very powerful, penetrating worm. And it was going through the entire wall, slowly eating away at the substance of the wall. And that it was going to come down. Uh, and so he encouraged everybody to see this vision. And uh, I'm told of seeing like a park, you know, where uh, children would play, people would picnic, and, and people would ride on their bikes where the wall once was. And he said that within two years, the wall would come down. And I, I'd been working with this man for a while, and I, I really thought he'd gone over the deep end. Because I, I think. If you can recall, in 1988, there weren't too many people talking about the wall coming down shortly. But our, our history tells us that in less than two years, the wall came down. And I, I know there are, are walls that are, that are here in many ways. And uh, I wanted to share a vision this morning that I have for Robben Island. Uh, and we've heard the voice of somebody who, who's been a resident here, and I think that's a great honor and privilege and of a vision of what greatness and inspiration has, has occurred for those who've uh, endured this place. But that this is a place that's being dedicated to peace, that it is a place of peace, and that our, our vision here is hearing the voices. Last night I was reading a little bit of the history of Robben Island, and there was something that came through it uh, over the several hundred years, over and over, from the people that lived here. And it was that they wanted better food, and they wanted some shade. <laughs> that there, there was no shade here, and they kept asking for better food and shade. And often they, they paid a very severe penalty for when they didn't uh, go after the food or the shade in the ways that the authorities would allow. So let us just see a vision here of a place where there is wonderful shade, wonderful food. I don't know what it means to become dedicated as a World Heritage Site, but I, I hope it is a place where people will now come here and find great peace, great joy, and great celebration that we can not forget what has happened here, but we can look forward to a vision 
and a blessing here that this place becomes a most beautiful place in the world. God bless you all. Do we have someone here who can do a traditional African blessing? Can you? the spirit of our ancestors and of all those who dwelled and perished here and those who gave us liberation. May they rest in peace.